I wish I could tell you, do these things and you're 100% guaranteed not to ever have sickness in your flock. But I cannot do that and no one can. What I can do is give you some scenarios that I've learned over many years of teaching about chickens that really predispose a chicken to getting sick. And hopefully that will give you the best chance of avoiding anything that could be really devastating to your flock. In an uncertain world, one thing unites us all, the chicken. From the suburbs to the big city, let's learn an inclusive and stress-free way to raise chickens. Welcome to Chickenlandia. Hey guys, welcome to Chickenlandia. I am a backyard chicken educator here in the Pacific Northwest, but you can call me the president of Chickenlandia. You know, one thing that I have seen over and over again is a lot of disagreement on how to keep chickens healthy or treat chicken illness. I really try and stay out of it because it kind of bums me out. I think it's important for us to try and help each other and to always be open and validate each other for our experience as backyard chicken keepers instead of just arguing all the time. I don't like that. <laughs> The first reason chickens get sick is kind of a no-brainer. But I think because of that, people kind of forget about it. So then it ends up being an issue. So I want to kind of bring it to the forefront. Obviously, your chickens need balanced nutrition in order to thrive and avoid illness. Now, I'm not going to tell you measurements or percentages or anything like that. I prefer just to keep it common sense. I like to think of the way I feed my chickens as more like a food pyramid with their layer feed at the bottom because since chickens are laying so many eggs they really have some nutritional needs that need to get met in order for them to have a healthy reproductive system and lay eggs with good hard shells so i keep layer feed at the bottom as the majority of their feed now i am somebody who believes in feeding chickens kitchen scraps, green leafy vegetables are the best, low sugar fruits. These are things that can get some important nutrients into them that is lost in the processing of their feed because most chickens are on processed feeds. And I also think it's not only good for the health of the chicken, but it's also great for our families, for our community and for our planet. So in the interest in keeping chicken keeping sustainable, I will always be in favor of feeding your chickens some kitchen scraps. That would be the second tier of the pyramid. Remember, you want most of what they eat to be their layer feed, then some healthy kitchen scraps. And then at the top, you can have healthy treats like grubs, scrambled eggs, mealworms, scratch and corn, and those will change with the seasons. Now, of course, along with good nutrition, you want to give them layer grit. That is gonna go into their gizzard and help them to digest their feed. And then you also want to offer laying hens a calcium supplement, either oyster shell or their own crushed egg shells to make sure that they have nice, strong bones and lay good, strong eggs. The next reason I see chickens getting sick is poor husbandry. If you have chickens living in a dirty environment that's damp, that has poop buildup, that has ammonia buildup, that is a recipe for illness and parasite infestation. Now, my chicken coop is not perfect by any sense of the word. And there have been times when I've really struggled. Like when I had my second child, it was really hard for me to keep up with my chicken coop and I had to get help. And even today, I still get help at least once a month to keep my chicken coop nice and clean. And that's because I do have some physical limitations and I also have time constraints because I'm out here shooting videos all the time. <laughs> I am a very busy person teaching people about chickens and I've got a lot of things going at the same time. So I do need help. So there's never any judgment on my part. I just think if you end up with chickens that are sick and especially if it's more than one chicken, you really need to evaluate your practices, make sure you clean your coop out really well and come up with a system that will be easier for you to stay on top of it. Because not only is the ammonia buildup bad for your chickens and it can make them sick, it can also make you sick. And anybody that's outside with your chickens, like kids or whatever, it makes them vulnerable to getting sick. So we don't want that. The next reason that I observe 
chickens getting sick is that they are under stress. Now we know that stress affects us as human beings. We know that if we're under a lot of stress, we're more vulnerable to getting sick. We're more vulnerable to getting physical problems. Chickens experience stress when their needs are not being met. So maybe they're not getting enough food. Maybe they don't have clean water or they can't get to their water. Maybe they're in a situation where there's not enough space for them. Or maybe there's not enough enrichment in the space that they have. So these are things that you really wanna be mindful of. You wanna make sure that your chicken's needs are being met and definitely that they're not under some kind of stressful situation where there's continuous predator attacks. They are vulnerable if that happens to them, not only physically from the predator, but also because it makes them experience a lot of stress and then they become vulnerable to disease and parasite infestation. All right, guys, this is the last reason I see chickens getting sick. It's, these aren't the only reasons, but these are the top four that I have found. And I really don't like this one because I don't want to discourage people. But the truth of the matter is, if you bring chickens from another location into your flock, you are risking bringing disease into your flock. Now, a lot of people will tell me, but I quarantine. So I know that I'm not gonna bring disease into my flock if I quarantine new chickens. And that really is a good practice. You need to quarantine new chickens for at least two weeks. Make sure that they're far away from your flock. Wash your shoes, wash your hands when you're moving between the flocks. But even with quarantine, you can still bring disease into your flock because there are chickens that carry pathogens that they have immunity to, but that your chickens might not have immunity to those pathogens. I'm not saying these things to discourage you from bringing in new chickens and expanding your flock because obviously I do that. I am rescuing chickens. Sometimes these chickens aren't from great environments. So I know that every time I do that, I'm taking a risk, but to me, it's worth it. Now for you, I just want you to make sure that you check out the place where you're getting your chickens from, make sure they have good practices and make sure that you quarantine your new chickens with your existing flock. I want you to give them good nutrition. I want you to make sure that they're in a stress free environment and I want you to make sure that you're keeping your coop clean and free of ammonia and just keeping those good practices in place. That way when you bring new chickens in you'll have the best chance of getting through it beautifully and you might be wondering well how do I bring new chickens in? If you're interested in integrating new chickens in a way that creates the least amount of stress for them then I want you to click on this video right here. It's a hundred percent friendly backyard chicken education and entertainment, and you're gonna love it. <laughs>